So let's take a look at legacy inner VLAN routing. Now this is the same network we use when we were setting up our VLANs. And we've got our VLANs all set up. We have our PCs all configured. And our PCs are configured with the IP address and a default gateway. So the default gateway for each one is going to be dot .1. All right. Now, with legacy inner VLAN routing, what we do is we take a router and we connect that router to one or more switches. Just going to rename this thing R1 here real quick. And for legacy inner VLAN routing, we just configure the router like we would for anything else. So let's go and run through our router config real quick. I'm going to skip the base router config. I'm just going to configure the interfaces. So I'm going to go to config t interface g00. I'm going to make myself a description here. Interface g00. Now I'll make myself a description. And I'm going to say this is going to be for VLAN 10. So I'm going to set an IP address of 192.168.1.1 with my subnet mask and then do a no shutdown. Boy, I cannot type shut today. There we go. Interface. And now I've got to do one of these for every single interface in every single VLAN. So this one is going to be VLAN 20. IP address 192.168.1.1 no shutdown and then interface G02 and description VLAN 30 set my IP address and no shutdown okay so that's all configured now um real quick let me end out of here we'll do a show run and we'll see we have our descriptions to remind us which each one goes through uh, to the ip address show ip interface brief and notice that i've had to create an interface or configure an interface for every single vlan and that is one of the big drawbacks to uh, traditional or legacy inner vlan routing is that i have to have a separate physical interface for every single vlan in my network in fact you'll notice i created vlan 123 so my user vlans or vlan 10 20 30 my user vlan interfaces i don't have any interfaces left for vlan 99 which is my native vlan and the one that i would uh tell that to so that's a big limitation so I've created it. Now, the other thing is I need to connect each one of those ports to the correct interface or a correct interface in that VLAN. So this one right here, G01, has to go to an interface in VLAN 10. So let's do, let's do the last one. Let's do F08. And then I have to create another one from G01, this is for VLAN 20, so I have to find an interface in VLAN 20. Let's do F017. And then I have to create another one for VLAN 30, G02 to F024. And then we'll fast forward time, so that works. Okay, now our legacy inner VLAN routing is set up. And now I should be able to ping from, let's go from this PC to, oh, well, let's do 2.11 in a different VLAN. So it's going to have to cross a switch line or a trunk line and it's going to, stop that, uh, it's going to have to cross the trunk line and it's going to have to be routed. So I'm going to ping. 192.168.2.11. And this might take it a second because it's got to figure some things out here. There we go. Now we're replying. So literally what's happening is I am going from here 
to my switch on VLAN 10, out the interface for VLAN 10 to my router, coming in G00 on my router, getting routed over to G01, which is my interface for VLAN 20, coming back out here to the switch on a VLAN 20 port, getting tagged as VLAN 20, sent across the trunk line to this switch where we read the tag as VLAN 20 and deliver it to a port in VLAN 20, and then back. So, that's how we do traditional inner VLAN routing. Now, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't require any, any new skills, any new techniques on the uh, router. Here's the limitation to traditional or legacy inner VLAN routing. We already touched on it. I have to have a, an access line for every single VLAN going to that router. And if I have more than the number of VLAN, more VLANs than the number of Ethernet interfaces I have on my router, I have a problem. I have to start adding more interfaces and that gets expensive in a hurry. So that becomes a major, major issue. So traditional inner VLAN routing has that big drawback. Now there are a couple of other methods. We can do a router on a stick configuration or a layer three switch configuration. We'll walk those through those two in our next couple of videos.